So to help reinforce the benefit of having some type of a protocol that can help us behind the scenes identify where all these are connected to, here's my little stack of four switches together. I've got some fiber, I've got some copper connections. And I can guarantee you in the last couple of days, I've moved these cables around quite a bit. And so if these switches were, for example, in a wiring closet, or they were even hundreds of miles away and I wasn't directly there, we could leverage a protocol like CDP or LLDP to help us identify the connections from one switch to the other. Or if we have a router or some other device that supports these protocols, it can help us identify the connections from those two devices that are running the same protocol. So the two protocols that can help us identify the connections are both layer two protocols, meaning they operate at the data link layer of the TCP IP protocol stack. So it doesn't really matter what we're using at layer three. It could be IPv4 or IPv6 or something else for that matter, because here at layer two, these protocols can still help us identify exactly what device is connected to another device. And the two main protocols are CDP, which is Cisco Discovery Protocol, which is proprietary. And that will work great if you have all Cisco devices. So let's imagine we have a switch, a layer two switch, or a multi-layer switch either way, and it's got a bunch of ports on it. Let's imagine we also have a Cisco router. We'll call that R1. And let's imagine it's connected right here. And let's go ahead and draw another switch. We'll call this one switch two. And let's imagine we're connecting them on a few ports and to optimize the actual throughput, instead of having spending three kill all of those connections except for one, perhaps we set up link aggregation with ether channel and we treat all those four as a single logical interface. And that way spanning tree's happy, we get the throughput. So to set that up on two Cisco switches, we'd use link aggregation control protocol. Or if this was a Cisco switch, and this was a switch from another vendor, we could also use that standard for negotiating the link aggregation group. In fact, let's go ahead and say that this device right here is from Cisco, and this device right here, switch two, is from another vendor, not Cisco. And let's imagine these ports are one, two, three, and four, and five. And down here, let's have ports eight, and nine, and 10, and 11, and 12. So behind the scenes, CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, is running by default, and it's sending little messages out periodically. So the router would be sending them out, and the switch here would be sending them out. And that way, these two devices can dynamically, with this layer two protocol called Cisco Discovery Protocol, identify what's on the other side. So this router can know off of its gig zero zero interface, for example, that there's a switch. And as part of those CDP advertisements, it could advertise the capabilities of the switch. It could advertise what the management IP address is of the switch and a whole bunch of other details, all in these little CDP messages that are being sent out and vice versa. The router is sending CDP messages by default. The switch is learning about them here. And so the switch would know, oh, here on my local interface number one, I'm receiving these CDP messages. And in those CDP messages, I'm learning all about router one. I'm learning that router one is sending those messages from its zero zero interface. I'm learning about this router's name and its management IP address and its capabilities that it can be a router. And all that information is communicated at layer two via this layer two protocol called CDP. However, what is a problem is that with switch one and switch two, because switch two is a different vendor, meaning it's not Cisco, it's very likely that this second switch here, switch number two, does not support CDP. Now, some, some companies do with some of their products, like VMware has some products that support CDP, but most vendors do not. And so we don't have, with CDP, the option of dynamically learning that our ports two, three, four, and five are connected down here to the respective ports 9, 10, 11, 12, and also learn the capabilities of the other side using CDP. And that's why we have another industry standard option for a layer two discovery protocol, and that is LLDP. And that stands for a link layer discovery protocol. And fortunately, if we want to enable this layer two discovery protocol on our Cisco devices, we can because most Cisco products not only support CDP by default, but although the default is disabled, they have the ability to enable LLDP so we can actually do layer two discovery with other vendors and not just with other Cisco equipment. So here on this switch, switch one, if we enabled LLDP, so I'll put a little plus there saying we've enabled it on switch number one and on the other vendor switch, we're also running LLDP, which it may be enabled by default or we may have to enable it. Now we're able to send and receive LLDP messages back and forth. So switch one will know, oh, okay, on my local port two, I'm connected to this switch, switch two. Here's its capabilities. Here's its management IP address. 
and I'm directly connected from my port 2 over to its port 9, because in the advertisements coming in from Switch 2, it's including not only information about its management IP address and its capabilities, but it's also sending in information about the individual port that's sending out those LLDP messages. So those LLDP messages will be sent respectively in and out on each of these ports. And here's the benefit. You and I, we can sit over here at a computer with remote access into these devices, and we can issue the appropriate commands to see that LLDP information. So from either one of these devices, we can determine, oh, we have these ports on switch two that are connected over to these respective ports over on switch one. And on switch one, we could also see in this case with CDP, that port one is connected over to zero zero on the router, or for connecting to the router, we can see it from the router's perspective that it's local zero zero is connected to port one down here on this switch. Or we may decide to go ahead and also run LLDP here, and that would be perfectly fine as well. So you're not restricted to running just LLDP or just CDP. The key is, if you want interoperability with other vendors' gear, we would want to use the LLDP because that's the protocol that the other vendor is very likely to support. So let me clean a little bit of this up, and let's also talk about a few other benefits regarding a Layer 2 discovery protocol. Let's imagine on switch one right here, the Cisco switch, that we have port zero. And let's also imagine we have a PC that is going to be in VLAN 100. So we cable that guy up, we connect it to port zero, and at port zero on this switch, we do the command switch port mode access to tell that port it's an access port, and switch port access VLAN 100 to tell the switch that this port, port zero, is now going to be associated as an access port in VLAN 100. And boom, we're done. And then this PC would have an IP address appropriate for that IP subnet that's using VLAN 100, either manually configuring an IP address or getting an IP address dynamically via DHCP. Either way is great. So let's imagine this PC is up and happy and working. Things are great. And then the company decides, oh, we're going to add an IP phone to this cube or to this location where the PC is. So we say, no problem. We know exactly how to do that. What we'll do is first get the phone. So I'll go ahead and put our phone here. This is the IP phone. Then we'll use a cable from the port on the switch that goes to one of the ports on the phone. And then we'll use another port on the phone and have that with a connection out to the network interface card on the PC. So this port right here, port zero, still configured as an access port in VLAN 100, but we also added to the config to this port, we also said switch port voice VLAN. And let's say we want to use the VLAN of 200 for our voice VLAN. So even though it's still an access port, we now have added on top of it the voice VLAN. So the phone, when it sends its traffic into the switch, it's going to use the 802.1Q tag of 200. So why am I revisiting voice VLANs? We're talking about discovery protocols. Well, if this phone plugs into this port, how does it know what the voice VLAN is? So one of the options we're going to use with this IP phone is to tell it via CDP messages exactly what the voice VLAN is. So on the switch port configuration, it can leverage CDP to communicate that information over to the IP phone. So that's yet an additional benefit of having this layer two discovery protocol is we can have devices like phones discover details and data from the switch at layer two. So here's another little wrinkle. Not every IP phone is from Cisco. So what if we have a third party IP phone? If it's a third party IP phone, it's very likely not going to be supporting CDP. So then what do we do? Well, the answer for that is we're going to leverage LLDP along with the little option called MED. And the MED is an acronym for Media Endpoint Discovery, which has additional attributes that we can use to communicate and identify devices such as an IP phone. Also behind the scenes, there's a concept of a TLV. And whenever you see TLV, think of data or attributes. And the actual TLV acronym stands for type, for example, the type of information, and the L is for length, and the V is for the actual value or the data itself. And so within LLDP, we can leverage the TLVs. For example, what exactly do we want to include or not include when we send our little LLDP messages back and forth? Here's a quick example. As part of our TLVs, do we want to include the management IP address as we advertise our little LLDP messages back and forth? Well, if we do want to share what the management IP address is on, for example, switch two, we'd want to include that TLV as part of our LLDP messages. Or on the other hand, if we don't want to share, for example, our system description or some other attribute, we simply specify to the switch, hey, when you send these little LLDP messages, don't include this or do include that, depending on how much information we want to share with the other side. So let me clean that up a little bit. 
And here's the key takeaways from the overview. We can discover what we're connected to from one device to another by using a compatible layer two discovery protocol. And it really doesn't matter which one we use as long as the two devices that are communicating with each other both support the same one. And also we're not restricted to just one protocol. So if we had this switch one that was using CDP, we could run that and exchange information between router one and the switch. And we could also use LLDP between switch one and switch two. The big thing to remember in a Cisco environment, however, is that CDP is enabled by default and LLDP is not. So if we want to use LLDP, we simply have to enable the feature before we can start using it. So now that we've taken a big picture look at some of these features of these layer two discovery protocols, in the next video, we're going to focus our attention on CDP as far as how it works, how we can use it, how we can configure it. Then we'll move to LLDP with a similar approach regarding how we can use it, how we can configure it. And then after we've done all that, I'll put you on a hands-on lab so you can get practice working with both of these protocols yourself. So I'll see you in the next video as we take a closer look at Cisco Discovery Protocol. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.